on YouTube, top of the morning. I would like to thank all my new subscribers. Let's get the count up. I need to get to 20K. Um, make sure y'all like, share, subscribe to all my videos. You know, drop your comments. I want to hear all y'all feedback. You know, I answer, I answer questions. I do all of that. You know what I'm saying, um, this video is a, a jail story. You know what I'm saying, I, I've been slacking on those. I got a lot of those for y'all. You know what I mean? But this is this is a situation where this one time out of all the times I've ever been in prison or jail that they um a situation had happened before that or whatever i ain't gonna get into that and i'm saying that's neither here nor there and they end up ipc in me right which means for those dummies that don't understand that might be in the comments talking whatever i don't care i don't sugarcoat nothing i keep it all the way a thousand because that's just me like there's no there's no reason to lie you know what i'm saying and like i said everything i speak on is straight facts Especially if it's about my personal life or me, you know what I'm saying? Anything to do with me or surrounding me. And um, so, yeah, like I said, they IPC me for whatever situation happened, right? So I get there. Now, IPC and PC is two different things. PC is when you sign in because you're scared, you can't live nowhere, this, that, and the third, et cetera, et cetera. IPC is involuntary protective custody, meaning they sign you in. The higher ups, the white shirts that's in the building, you know, run that Pacific building that you in, sign you in for day reasons or administration reasons because they don't want to catch, you know, lawsuits or against them or whatever, whatever the case may be, right? So that's what my situation was. So they IPC me. I couldn't sign out. Even if I tried to or did, it wouldn't, nothing would have happened, right? So I'm at IPC, and now y'all got to remember, right? For those that don't know, a lot of people don't know, but in PC and IPC, they, they house all of y'all together. It's two different sides, you know, whatever side you land on, they house all of y'all together, right? Now, all of the, all of the, the high profile cases that make the news, that make the daily news front page, the New York Post, whatever newspaper that's in New York State or New York City rather, they go there, right? So we will be chilling in the day room, watching the news and, or somebody will come back from the visit floor with a, with a, with a newspaper and homie that just walked in a few hours ago is in the newspaper, he raped a little kid or he killed the lady or, you know, he did something. And he killed his girlfriend or whatever he did, he raped the old person and raped the young kid or whatever. You know what we doing, we smoking his boots. Yo, I'll at you. I, most of the time they quiet, they don't talk to nobody because they don't want nobody to know. But eventually, if it hits the news, if it hits the newspapers, we get it. Now, when you in there, Rikers Island, the whole Rikers Island give out newspapers, period, like every day. Now, if there's any type of high profile cases, like I said, they rip them out. Meaning anybody that makes the newspaper, ex-cops, ex-COs, they rip them out so nobody would know. But that don't stop when we go down on the visit floor and our family or whoever coming to visit us bring us newspapers. They can't rip our personal newspapers, you feel me? So we, we still get the stories. And like I said, homie will just walk in and niggas will be in the day room watching the TV and niggas, cause like I said, don't get it twisted. You got some real gangsters in IPC, whatever you want to call it, PC, whatever you want to call it. Ain't no hiding, ain't none of that. So if that's what y'all thinking, y'all wrong. I was on a visit. You get visits three times a week on Rikers Island. I was on a visit every week, three times a week. No need to lie. Those that know, they know. And that that been happening since I was getting, you know, going in and out as a as a youth, as an adolescent. I was on the visit floor, dance floor crazy. Used to be rocking up there for three hours long as an adolescent because my weight was up. Police respecting my shit. You know what I'm saying? But that's not the story here. So, like I said, yeah, don't get it twisted. It's, 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 some, it's some soft, soft pussy niggas in PC, IPC, whatever you want to call it. And it's some real gangster, big blood niggas, big Latin king, big party, all that. So, it gets real. Ain't no hiding, like I said. You go to court with regular general population. You, you, uh, you in the, you on the bus with general population. You, 
know what I'm saying? When you go to the visit floor, you, you, you there's no separation. You on the visit floor with these niggas. You waiting in the back with them for the CEOs to call your name to come out and see your visitor with them. So it's no hiding. You got to go to medical. It's, no, it's none of that. You know what I'm saying? So all of y'all that don't know what y'all be talking about and get a misconception um, of what PC is or IPC, this is what it is. What I'm explaining to you because I lived it. I experienced it. Unfortunately, I was in a situation and, you know, I ended up getting locked up and, no, not Karen doing stupid shit, like I said. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I was in there, right? And this, you know, this gotta be the most funniest place I've ever been, one of the most funniest houses I've ever been in, right? So, as I'm in there, remember, they got homos and all that coming through there, living there and all that on both sides, the north and the south side, right? So, check it out. There was a homo nigga named, by the name of Sharika. Everybody knew this nigga from back in the days as an adolescent. He was beating niggas up on Rikers Island, C-74, three upper, three main, everywhere. They was He was putting hands on niggas that was playing him. Some black nigga, I don't know where he's from, I think from Manhattan or Brooklyn. But the nigga had little titties. He had his fucking, no, his, his, his cheeks looked like he got injections and shit and around his eyes, so his shit was all puffy and all that. Looked it crazy, but back, that was, that's now. The last time I ran into him on Rikers Island, which was 2019. But he goes way back to the adolescence days, 2006, 2005, where the nigga had a long hair and wig. He walking down the hallway, I'm saying, niggas is laughing at him, and this nigga square, like, what's up? Y'all niggas laughing at him. I, I get, he was knocking niggas out. He was putting niggas out. I'm saying, a lot of niggas won't tell that story from my era, you heard? A lot of niggas won't speak on that nigga, I'm saying? But I keep it real, like I said, I don't give a fuck about all that sexuality shit. As long as you don't come my way with that disrespectful shit, you know what I'm saying I respect you. You respect me. That's it. That's how we keep it. You know what I'm saying I got family that's gay. I don't care about all that. I grew up with gay people. I don't care about any of that. Just don't come my way. I like females. I have a wife. That's it. <laughs> I mean, um, so yeah, like I said, he was putting niggas out. He was putting niggas out. A lot of niggas respected that nigga in C-74 Rikers Island adolescent days back in 2005, 2006, 2007. He was putting niggas out. They tried to put him in IPC, PC. He, he dubbed it, basically. Back then, you could do stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? He's like, don't put, put me in general population. I don't want to go in no PC, right? So anyway, the last trip I was there, right? <laughs> Funny ass shit. PC is the most common. It's like Jerry Springer shows going on in there every day. Cause like I said, there's a lot of home, home uh, gay people, excuse me, a lot of gay people that come through there and lives there. Cause you know, they don't put them in regular population. Not a lot of them. Most of them go straight to um, PC, right? And they be tough too. So none of that gay shit matter. They men at the end of the day, they get a shaking and they not scared to get a shaking. Like I never met a gay person that was scared to fight ever. Especially if they was black you know what I'm saying So We in there like I said You never ever supposed to have interactions With no type of homos Whether you gang banging or not Cause then people going you know what I'm saying The only way Only time you're supposed to have any type of interaction Is if they If they buying drugs off you You selling drugs to them Or you buying anything off them Or selling anything off them I mean to them like, for me, for instance, I used to buy all their phone calls because they don't call nobody, really. Give me all those. I need all those. You know what I'm saying? So, Sharika's already in the house. He pulls up. He's already in there for a few months. He comes from Brooklyn House, right? Now, I've never been to Brooklyn House, but a lot of people told me there's mad homos in there, mad. A lot of them is a lot of homo activity going on with regular dudes in there in Brooklyn House. When it was open, I heard it closed down now, but no. Back then, 2019, you know what I'm saying? So, he pulls up, he's in the house for whatever, for a little while, whatever, a few months, a couple months. Now, my cell, I think I was in 18 cell, I could see the front. So, whenever somebody comes in, I could my the crack of my cell is facing the front of the tier. So, I could see the bubble, the CO moving around in the bubble, and I could see whenever a CO come in or if they bring a new inmate inside. As well as Sharika, he's on the other side of the tier, like, you know, the doors is right across the hall, and but he's more up. So he could see clearly who comes in the front, right? So now, boom, 
you hear the gate, man, right? everybody locked down. I get on my gate to see who that, cause I, you know, I'm in the set, I'm blowing it down, I'm getting high, I'm smoking into the face, and I ain't trying to, you know, get ran down on by police. So I go to my cell, move my curtain, and I look through the crack, and I see another homo come through with a blonde wig and a goatee. I'm like, what the, f they, don't, they just don't stop bringing these niggas here. You know what I'm saying? And I'm over there like, yo, niggas just start laughing on their gate, acting crazy, like, yo. Uh, talking, saying stupid stuff, you know. So then, the whole time as I'm watching on my gate, right, the new homo nigga that came in was start arguing with Sharika because Sharika recognized a nigga from Brooklyn House, right? And he recognized dude from Brooklyn House, and I guess they had a little situation or altercation over there with over some nigga. Over some regular straight nigga, hood nigga, I guess, that was locked up in Brooklyn House. I guess that was Sharika Man, and they had something going on. I don't know, because I wasn't there, you heard? So don't ask me. But all I know is that the gate popped open for the new nigga to come through, right? Wait, rewind that. Sharika Hog spit on the nigga through the gate, because his, 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 his cell was, like I said, real close to the front gate, and he could see exactly who's coming in. And the cells that we had, you could stick your arm through the little slot right here in the window, like, you feel me? Through the door, so your arm will be out the door. You got, you could snuff a nigga through, you could pull a nigga by his shirt, yank him to the door, break his face. You could do all types, you could do shit if they get, if niggas get close to you, right? So Sharika Hogg spit on a nigga before he came in, flew through the gate. I'm watching this through the crack of my cell, dying, laughing. Everybody on the tear screaming, Jerry, Jerry. I'm like, yo, I got to get the fuck out of here. Like, I got to get home. This shit is wicked, right? I'm dying. I'm high as hell, all that, right? So the gate opened, the CO come in with the, with the, with the gay dude, the new gay dude to take him to the cell. Mind you, you got to pass Sharika's cell. You got to pass everybody's cell. Cause the cell somewhere in the back, right? Soon as that nigga got close to Sharika's cell, that nigga spit on Sharika. He, that nigga Sharika started throwing his, like, a fist, a closed fist through the slot because there's enough space, you feel me? He started throwing his fist through the slot, hitting the nigga, boom, the other nigga hitting him, trying to grab, they grabbing each other through the slots. Yo, it was, yo, everybody on the gate, Ah, mind you, it's like one in the morning, bro. Two in the morning, niggas supposed to be asleep. Niggas is on the gate. Ah, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. Ah, niggas is laughing, cutting jokes. Oh, yo, it was a crazy situation. That shit was crazy and funny as hell. But that was like a nonstop thing. Like that shit always happened. Like it was crazy in that. I had to just, uh, <laughs> like I said, I had to get high every day. I spent a lot of money in there on, on weed. You know what I'm saying? Cause that was the only thing that helped me stay sanity and I mean and uh, and make me, you know, focus up and try to, you know, learn about the case I was being charged with, the indictment and all that extra shit and try to get out back to the family, you feel me? So that's just some of the things that you will experience if you continue to, you know, live that negative lifestyle and if you go up north and you go in prison, man, they everywhere. And those, most of the time, a lot of the homos that's up north in prison been locked up for decades, years, 10 or better. They got a 97 number, you feel me? So they be on to niggas. Like, they be trying to run down on niggas, but in nice ways. You feel me? I seen it happen. Nigga try to do, play that shit with me. I had to break one of them up in the laundry room. Word. You feel me? Shit was crazy. But... Yeah, that's just a funny little story, man. Ain't none of this shit to be glorified. Like I said, this shit is never to be glorified. It's always to uplift our youth and our, you know, troubled teenagers, man. Y'all don't want to be there. Y'all don't want to be nowhere in there, surrounded by them type of people or even wolves and gangsters and, 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 and niggas that's looking to prey on the weak. You feel me? It's not worth it. At the end of the day, get it together or forget it forever, man. That's why I always keep telling y'all, that's the whole point of this shit, man. If you don't get it together, you could just forget it forever, man. Y'all niggas wasting y'all lives, giving it to the penal system, giving it to the street life, losing your life, getting killed, feel me, over nothing. Bullshit. Because that's what it really be. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, man, to each his own, for those that's gonna listen and change, 
hope y'all, you know, take heed to these videos that I be dropping, man. Another thing is, make sure y'all hit that like button, man. The, the YouTube algorithm has changed, I heard, so, you know, and plus I've been slacking, so I got to get back on it. Make sure y'all hit the video uh, up, you know, subscribe, like, share, comment. Let's push these videos out there so we can get these, uh, you know, the message across to the youth and the troubled teens out here, man, doing all this negativity shit and, you know, wasting their life, giving their life to the, to the, to the system. Years and you no, know, shit ain't worth it, man. Like I said, man. Until then, man, stay tuned, man. Peace and love, I'm out of here.